Yo. So a lot of this was face replacements. That's not something that like you just simulate. You don't just hit a button and it, it's made. <laughs> no. There is way more CG in here than you would actually expect. Wait, those are 3D animations? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. Today we are joined by Sean Walker from Weta Effects. He's in town for this little thing you might know called the Academy Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what exactly do you do at Weta? So I am the Visual Effects Supervisor, which means that I am essentially financially and creatively responsible <laughs> for all the the stuff that Financially we... Financially responsible I know. in case it's, anything it's fails. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my team and myself are responsible for creating the final delivered shots to the studio. In this case, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Basically, we have a creative. A lot of the times we are delivered artwork from Marvel. And uh, that's the end goal, to try and reach the point where we can line up to the creative that works for them. And then once we, you know, uh, design the look for all the shots, we have to figure out how to actually do all those shots. So for example, Shang-Chi, we had an enormous amount of water work to do. Water work is incredibly tricky. What's so hard about water? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you just like, you know, hit the button? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it that's hard. It comes out of the faucet. It's exactly what it does. It's just an incredibly render intensive effect to work and to get to look right. The render time it takes to actually produce these renders for water is very intense. The water effects from Shang-Chi were like specifically mentioned in the episode with Joe Farrell in the comments. <laughs> Because everyone's like, I can't believe you didn't talk about the water! I was like, oh, just you wait. <laughs> Yo. That's cool. Is that just one simulation there, or are you dealing with like four or five different like elements that artists have put together to make it happen? So there are actually four or five elements in here as well. Yeah, this is a bit of a blend. And I tell you, this one was very, very art director. There was a lot of problems with it in the first place. To make sure that a character hits the water still continues along the length of the water surface. So water interaction is one thing. The other thing is actually having the water move like a character. We've never done that before, and that's where it started to get pretty interesting. When we had Brian Grills on the show, he was talking about how you're trying to strike this really tricky balance between physics and what water actually does, and then like what the director wants, yeah. or what you need to do creatively to tell your story, and very often one breaks the other. I mean, ideally and realistically, he would just go into the water and you wouldn't see him again. But we really <laughs> wanted to see him go into the distance without parting the water so much that it felt too anime. Did the director actually say, I don't want it to feel too anime? Are yeah. those actual words, <laughs> really? <laughs> we actually did take a lot of inspiration from anime. Uh, the very first thing I did when um, we saw the previous come through of Shang-Chi running up the side of the dragon was look at Attack on Titan. Oh, yeah? And yeah, see the, the characters running along the length of the arms. Oh, nice. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty classic. I really wanted to film the underwater shots a little bit more accurately than I think has been done before. If you ever look at underwater photography, a lot of specular highlights on the skin and the eyes is minimized pretty much nothing. And I thought we could achieve that by using uh, polarized light. So we did a bunch of tests and we did all these grades and uh, underwater atmospherics and it looked pretty good. And Chris Townsend, Marvel's VFX supervisor, took that setup and I think he tried to implement that as much as possible here but it wasn't quite the setup. There's a fine balance between, you know, getting the lighting that you want and actually um, making something realistic as well. So here we looked for a more beautiful sort of lighting scenario and then just graded the highlights out here. So why not just film underwater? Simu's not a good swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> there are definitely certain films that will go that way for sure. It's just preference and cost, I think, as well, and just being able to go ahead and set something like that up. But it's much easier, of course, to film something in a studio than it is underwater. True, mm -hmm. and I suppose if you have a whole pipeline built, it's like, we're already going to be putting in a CG dragon in the shot anyway. It's yeah, like, that's true. You want to color grade in blue and, you know, diffuse it a little bit? It's like, yeah, I guess I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> He breached the gate! Those things are gonna kill us all if we don't work together! This shot here, oh my god. So, all of these shots, there is way more CG in here than you would actually expect. Go back and just pause on one of those shots and let's just guess. Yeah, I was, yeah, exactly. These days, literally all of it could be, except for like the main actors here. So like, maybe the ninjas in the background, the building in the background. The background. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're pretty much right. There's just a small bit of grass in the foreground with a bush, but everything beyond the white banister there is CG. The big problem was that they, they filmed all of this in sunny Sydney, Australia. Everything was being hit by hard sunlight. So any plate that came in that had hard sunlight hitting uh, had to be replaced. Really? All the characters, all the background extras were all getting hit by hard sunlight. So we match moved every single one of them. Wait, those are 3D animations? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so this is where it got a little bit wild because uh, they had a uh, crane that suspended this insanely large sheet. Basically it was there to shadow everything in the foreground and so you had this hard shadow line on the ground mm. everywhere and everything beyond that hard shadow line we had to pretty much replaced at a certain point. I guess what I'm confused about is like why not shoot this in a studio then and then eventually get to just really controlled studio lighting towards the end of the sequence. This set was ginormous. It was pretty much the entire village, so they wanted oh, to make sure. sure that they could actually film the whole thing as much as possible. <laughs> These shots were extraordinarily complicated when they came in, and it gave our animators a little bit of a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> when, when you see like 50 people in the background just blindly swinging at something, oh, you no. don't know what it is, but they're swinging at something, <laughs> you always think, okay, uh, we've got to put something in there. We've got to animate these multi-tentacled, winged, crazy creatures for every one of these swings. We did just hear that tentacles are the hardest thing to animate. They are particularly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So all your animators are just like, oh my god, we have a, a, literally an army fighting an invisible army and now yep. we have to invent the invisible army. Exactly. So did the animators have to like go in and like make everything perfectly match or did they just kind of be like, oh, just a little flutter around and the noise yeah, will? Yeah, a little bit of that. So unless they were 100% interacting with the characters, we had enough variation in animation to have a match for each of these on-set stunt doubles. <laughs> So a lot of this was face replacements. Simu and Tony did a ton of their own work, but all of this was stunt people. For face replacements, they just like, I can hear Simu just like, make this motion that roughly matches the other one and we'll cut it out? Or are you like full on 3D scanning and like... Uh, yeah, so we had full on digital doubles for both of these. We approached the face replacements in a multitude of ways. The stunt doubles here didn't always have the same head shape. So we did try and go the route of just projecting the faces on. But in the end, it ended up being a mix of digital head replacements projected faces and a little bit of uh, machine learning as well. Oh really? Yeah. When you say machine learning you mean deep fakes? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Commonly so you guys are starting to experiment with that a little bit? Yep. We had it pipelined pretty well by the end of it, but uh, it wasn't quite there yet. So instead of doing stunty to, uh, to actor, we did digital double to actor. What it did do is help us get a little bit closer to, I think, the character of, or the actor, as far as the way they smile and the way they perform. That's cool. We've actually, we've seen a ton of this online, like anytime over the past like four years when a movie comes out with like a CG actor or an actor that's passed away, invariably somebody goes, here, I put a deep fake on it and now it looks a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. And it makes sense because you know it's like ILM or Weta or somebody goes through the effort of like full on CG face replacement. It's like okay, great. And somebody else comes, comes and is like, yeah, I'll just I'll just have the deep fake like Meh, and just like fix the little tiny things that like aren't quite 100% dialed in by CG. And it, it does usually look a little bit better. And so it's actually really cool to hear you, hear you guys saying that. You know, you're starting to experiment with that that passage, like the final little bit of like spice on your shot, because you know yeah. you have to go through the effort of changing the face shape and dealing with the hair and the collar interaction. Like that's all part of it that a deep fake can't do. But then you can just be like eh, and just apply a little just bit of deep fake. Little to it. tweaks. It's like this yeah. is pretty good, but you know what? A little bit of deep fake. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> this whole set was entirely digital. They started to film on a, what we call like a fragmented set. So they had just a little partial piece at the bottom of the gate and all the ground, but the ground kind of looked rubbery. It didn't match up to our digital representation anyway. And you could tell because at a certain point in time, we started getting delivered plates that had they just said, yeah, screw it, Let's, uh, <laughs> this isn't going to work. And they just started blue screening off all the set that they had already made. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I remember seeing on Endgame where after the whole compound had been cratered, it was all shot in like this sort of like burnt out foresty type thing. And then 
It was all replaced. <laughs> exactly, yeah, no, our initial brief for that was, it was the Avengers compound uh, bordered basically like a forest. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point they were like, no, let's just make it more industrial. And so almost all of the environment there was completely CG as well. We had to roto all of the characters and replace everything. <laughs> I've had to do that more times than I can possibly imagine. Like uh, oh on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Like it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just a bit of a theme. It seems like big movies take for granted these days that people are just gonna cut out wrote everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly right, yeah. Again, I think we're there to support the story, and if the story requires things to be a little bit different, then uh, that's the path we'll take. Coming soon, Corridor Crew. One lone artist takes on Corridor's greatest champion in VFX Iron Artist. Competitors have two hours to present a CGI dish to the mythical VFX React crew. Can a hero topple an empire? Tune in this Wednesday to find out, or catch it a day early on CorridorDigital.com. This whole water spike thing coming up and curling around the, the final demon here. You know, it has a very solid feel to it. It almost kind of looks like ice, and yet I see a bunch of waves and foam rippling across its surface. So yeah. that's not something that like you just like simulate. You don't just hit a button and it, it's made. <laughs> no. This is the first time I think we've really done water where it had to be artistically directed in this way. We never really had it move like a character and that's kind of how we actually approached it. So our animation team actually animated all of these tendrils in the first place. We had a incredibly talented artist, Sarah Yu. She would generate all the water surface and the tendrils. We call these things Sarah's spirals <laughs> in the end. And uh, because there was so much water work here, we actually had a water team team that did very individual unique things for each simulation in each shot. So we had someone doing the water surface, we would have someone who would do the additional rippling on top, we had someone who would do the white water foam, someone who specifically just doing the spin drift, which mm. is you know the, <laughs> the white water spray that comes off the top. So uh, very specific but it was kind of the way we needed to approach it to actually get all of these water shots done. This shot here, the water alone took something like 25 million threaded render hours, I think, to, to produce, which I think takes your average sort of high-end computer maybe about tw 25 years to render. Damn. <laughs> and it's so, just this one shot. So that's at least four or five 3090s. <laughs> 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 but yeah, there was a, a few sweaty people when this shot hit the render wall because <laughs> even a render wall of our size, uh, we took up a good 60% of it for quite a few days. The people in Avatar were like, get the hell off. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that you guys still have to deal with resource usage. It's like, yeah, exactly. sorry guys, our, our computers are busy. It's like, the fact that Weta is still so, it's like, you guys are stressing your computers to the point where it's like, we're all out of memory. It's exactly. like, yes. <laughs> it's like a goldfish in a goldfish bowl, right? You're always going to use up every resource that you have. <laughs> CG double? CG double? No, uh, it was him running around on a natural beast, I think. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, so this one was one of those sort of big shots. It was much, much longer. A lot of Marvel films have what they call the one -er, and it's just like this big action beat, lots of things happening. The thing that we tried to do a lot of the time here, even if you're running around on a dragon, you know it can't possibly be real. You always want to make sure that the cameraman is in a reasonable position, that it's being filmed in a way that uh, seems plausible. So when we run off the back of the dragon here, you know, the cameraman's running and jumping off with him. He's literally following the action, jumping over the tentacle you know, we have pretty much a virtual camera guy in here making sure that he's getting the shot. He doesn't get enough recognition. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good camera person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So I was pitching this idea about what we would see internally for the demon as he's dying here. What I wanted to happen was all the bones and things to be breaking off and to have all the rings kind of swirl that on the inside <laughs> <laughs> along with the rest of the guts. And uh, I mean, it's very quick, so it's pretty hard to see. But yeah, that, that's kind of what's happening on that's the inside cool. there. There's gut that blender. Uh, gut blender, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's him>. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the result of the gut blender, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's been a treat as we record these episodes, getting a little bit of the inside, like, scoops on the story beats. <laughs> it's like, here's what actually happened. You can't see it, but <laughs> exactly. all the filmmakers agreed that this is what happened inside. And it's like, yes! It's our own little, yeah, exactly, our own little sweetener. 
So this show is behind the scenes of visual effects in Hollywood, but wouldn't you like to see behind the scenes of how this show is made, how we go about getting our guests? We can check it out on CorridorDigital.com. We actually have a whole Crew Cuts episode that's dropping about that right now. Plus, we have extended versions of these episodes, so if you really want to nerd out about visual effects or just get deeper into this information or just watch these conversations be less cut, CorridorDigital.com is the place to go. All right, it's comments time. I would like your suggestion. Please suggest to me the visual effects with the coolest destruction. As we call it in the biz, effects. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear your coolest simulations, your coolest destruction, the coolest, most mind-boggling water sims, or anything that you've seen in movies. Please leave a comment down below and we will check it out. Sean, it's been an absolute treat having you join us. Best of luck at the Oscars. It's Thank really you. cool that I have the opportunity to say that to somebody. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, absolutely. Say hi to Matt for me if you see him. I will, I will. <laughs> Matt's cool. He loved being here, like uh, he talks about it. <laughs> oh, great. It was, uh, cool. it was definitely one of his hi career highlights, I'm sure. That's no awesome. way. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> Surely it was scanning the troll. <laughs> scanning the troll, okay. Scanning the troll corridor crew. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, thank you. <laughs> it's really cool of you to stop here, considering you, you know, have to go buy your tuxedo or, <laughs> yeah. you know, get your limo that's all my Yeah, that's the visual effects life. <laughs> it's just parties and tuxedos. It's totally it. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's totally it, everybody. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> that's what you should look forward to in your visual effects career. <laughs> just running around with the stars. Yep. <laughs>